Welcome to Unleash Your Courage. This is your host, Angela Schroeder. We're excited you're here with us live. If you are joining us in the Facebook group or you are joining us live on Turfs Up Radio, we are here to talk about leveling up your life in business, facing your fears, getting uncomfortable, and what sets apart the best leaders. So Chelsea, I'm so excited to have you with us here today. Thanks for joining me. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I met Chelsea uh, just this year. Um, I guess in person, we met in Vegas the first time in January at IWCA. I got to see you guys and hang out for a little bit and then got the opportunity to speak at Clipicon at the end of March and spend more time with you and was excited to have you on and tell us a little bit about your story. So instead of me doing a bio introduction, I'm just going to have you share with the audience a little bit about you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, where do I start? Um, I've been, uh, I was born and raised here in Orange County, California, Southern California, um, with my mom. And I always just had, um, I guess just growing up, like it was always just me and my, my mom. She was a single mom. And so um, she always just taught me to like work really hard uh, for anything that you want. You can have whatever you want. You have to just work really hard. And so um I was always one of those those people. I had a job as soon as I could get a worker's permit. Um, I've always enjoyed working as much as I say. Like I always say my, my dream job is to be a stay-at-home mom with no kids. Um, I say that, but in all reality, like I, I love to show up and, and be a part of. And I always had sales jobs. My first sales job was at a shoe store. And, um, and then I worked in banking for a little bit um, before the crash in 2008 and eight. And then um, I got started working in call centers doing um, phone sales. And I always thought like when I got the call center job, I thought like, this is terrible. I'm a pesky telemarketer. This is the worst job ever. And my very first day I went home and I cried and I said, I cannot go to this job. This is the worst job I've ever had. And some of my friends and family, they were like, hey, like you have rent to pay. I was like 18, 19. They're like, you have bills to pay. Like you have to go to this job. The best thing you can do is have them fire you. It's better to get fired for poor uh, performance than to quit. And I cried and I went to the job the next day and I just did what I was told. And, and then I started to become really successful because I just did what other people told me to do. And, um, and then I started to like it because I started to make money. And, um, and so that's how I got cold calling. I was like 19 years old, started cold calling. And, um, and that was kind of like my journey. And somehow I ended up in Christmas. And um, I have a friend. She's worked in Christmas over 20 years. And she was like, hey, I have some friends. They're hiring. I think it would be great for you. Um, a company that I was working at was going through a transition. And so I was like, I'll just try it. And then I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what I want to do with my life. And, um, and, I, and I've been here ever since. I have not left. I absolutely love Christmas. Um, I joined CLIPA, the Christmas Light Installation Pros Association, in 2018. And I came in like November, which is the craziest part of the year. And um, it was just kind of like sink or swim. Like, this is what we need you to do. If you can't do it, we'll find someone else that can. So I was like panicking. I'm like, whatever I need to do, I'll do it. And um, they were very clear. Like Matt told me from the beginning, he said, this is a seasonal position. Like, don't get comfortable. We can't guarantee you a job. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll figure it out. And um, yeah, in that seasonal position. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, yeah. And now, you know, I've been here ever since. And um, I absolutely love my job. It's so much fun. Um, I love what we do too here. So like being a part of Clippa, not only do I get to excel and perform and have a good time, but I get to share what, what has worked for me and what hasn't worked with me, uh, for me with other people. And I think that's the greatest gift that this job gives me and why it's so rewarding is because I feel like I'm giving back and helping other people. Oh, I love that. Okay. There's so many of this I want to digest. <laughs> First, I didn't realize we had so much in common. Okay. I got to know a little bit at <laughs> Up, um, but more in that professional realm and you were helping me as a speaker and totally taking care of me. And then I was getting to learn more about Clippa, which we'll talk about, but um, totally like the sales history um, <laughs> of that in common. And I had almost the same story of telemarketing. <laughs> I did telemarketing in high school and same thing. I was like crying every day. Like, I hate this. Yeah. You, have have, you have to go to work. I'm like, but this is bad. <laughs> Yep. So much different than the face-to-face -face looking somebody in the eye. I've told stories about selling um, cut knives and I could rock that. But something about <laughs> cold calling 
this is the definition of hell. <laughs> it's so hard. But once you get used to it, like now I'm more confident on the phone than I am in person. Because I can be whoever I want on the phone. I can be, I can, and no one can see me, you know, when in person, I'm like, oh, I have a hair that's sticking up, you know, yes. like my eyelashes yeah. are crooked, you know, uh, but being on the phone, I feel more confident. Uh, but yeah, it's just so funny. I love that you said you can be whoever you want to be. And you, you really talked us through that story of just pushing through, like it was uncomfortable, you cried, it was bad, but the more you just made yourself uncomfortable and kept pushing through it you gained confidence and it became a skill set. And sometimes we have to do things that we really, really don't want to do. And we really don't want to do for a long time. And I think a lot of people give up and we give ourselves permission to give up. Like we're not good at that. I don't like that. I do not have to put myself in this situation that I don't like. And you pushed through and moved to the other side. And now it's something that's a skill for you. Yes. And the courage did not come from within immediately. Like I had to have other people mm -hmm. in my life that were like, hey, you know, they had to tell me the truth, which is really hard, too, because I have not always been open to constructive criticism or taking direction from someone else. So someone really just had to be like, hey, your life's kind of in a state of emergency. Like this is what you have to do to pull through and be an adult. And because my mom loves me, but my mom's my biggest enabler, you know, like even to this day, if I called her right now, she'd be like, I love you. You're perfect. You're special. You're unique, you know, but she would never be like, and she'd be like, if I said, mom, I don't like my job. She'd be like, that's okay, honey, get another one, you know? Uh, but I had to have other people that were like, Hey, you got to show up no matter what. Um, you can't just pick and choose and fly by the seat of your pants or any little feeling that you get. Sometimes we have to tough stuff out. And I think that that, has helped a lot, you know, and that's not of me to do those things. Oh, sometimes the people that love us the most are the biggest enablers. I love that you use that word, that they, they are enablers. They uh, want us to be comfortable. Yeah. And so they think they're in our corner. They think they're rooting us on. They love us, but mm -hmm. they don't help us grow. They want us to stay comfortable and protect us and do that. And it's so great that you had people in your lives and how important that is that you identified, you didn't have the courage yourself first. And I talk in the book and a lot about that we go through different stages and cycles of sometimes we are using our own courage, using our own champion spirit, and we're doing it really well and using courage instinctively. But there are seasons where we need to borrow courage from others and others need to give us that kick and come alongside us and be like, come on, courage. Yeah. 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 Um, and being able to reflect on that and identify that. And then, you know, how can we be that for other people? Sometimes other people need that uh, courage and run alongside, which is a lot of what, you know, you do now and <laughs> that courage to other people. So let's keep talking about um, uncomfortable since we went there. Um, and then we'll dive into the magic of Christmas. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, um, like I said, you were so great. I just felt like you came alongside me. It was a strange, not a strange <laughs> world, but Clippa was new to me and all new people. And you were great um, just coming alongside me at dinner on Wednesday and, you know, helping me feel comfortable speaking and stuff. And you spoke. Yes. <laughs> at, at this year. Was this your first year speaking? Um, I spoke last year with one of my friends and then um, I have taught other classes before. So it is nice. A lot of people, when you talk, you know how it is, you're a coach, you know, and you have, you work with other business owners, but mm -hmm. it's so nice when I'm there because pe some people I talk to almost on a daily basis. So I know about their lives. I know what's going on with their business and to have them there. And they're so cute that they all sit in the first few rows. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, I feel like I'm talking to my There's friends. There's hand club. Yeah, exactly. And when you focus on just a few people, you feel, I feel more relaxed. I'm like, okay, these are my friends. They support me. They want to learn. And so once that, once I think about focus on those things, the fear goes away. But if I focus on the fear of being perfect or stumbling over my words, then, then it's a wash. <laughs> yeah. You have to identify just like you talked about in your strength of you're confident in talking on the phone. Like, how can you relate that? How can you go back to that comfort confidence of storytelling and identifying with that person on the phone and your core people that have you 
and relate that instead of everybody from yes. the stage. <laughs> yep. So what do you love most about working with people and making a difference? Like you said, you feel like you're helping people every day and learning the things that you've learned and helping through them. What do you love most about that? I think the best part is, is um, I deal with people in all levels of the company. So they could just be operations. It could be installers. It could be a sales rep, or it could be dealing directly with a business owner. And one thing that I love is when, when something clicks as we're going through projects or we're working on something together and it's just the, aha, uh -huh, this is what I need to do. And um, like, I always tell people, I'm like, Hey, if I give you the recipe for this cake and I say, this is the best cake in the world but you just have to follow these simple instructions. Mm. Like, you know, I'm not gonna go add other stuff in. I'm like, just do what I tell you to do and I promise you'll be successful. They follow that recipe and then they're like, oh my gosh, it worked. I'm like, yes, yes, it works. It's it's nothing, um, it's not nothing that's hidden. It's all information you can find online, but it's a matter of how do we apply it? And sometimes that's, it's, I try to be that push in other people's life where I'm like, okay, do this, go try it and let me know how it is, you know? Um, so that's probably the most rewarding. It's just when I can see them light up and be on fire, I know that I've been successful in helping them where I kind of just, I try to eliminate the fear. I try to give them that courage where I'm like, hey, don't be scared. We have to start somewhere. If we do this, eventually we're going to get to where we need to be. Oh, I love that. Walking them through it, like taking them by the hand, <laughs> giving them that courage. And like you said, the blueprint so you do both. I think coaching involves two things. And sometimes there's two different types of coaches. One, there's coaches that give you the blueprint. Like, this is what worked for me. Here's the exact blueprint. Here's the recipe. Like you talked about, go through it. One, two, three, do the step. And there's coaches that are great at blueprint coaching. Like, here's the recipe. Go execute. This is what works for me. And there are coaches that are just more mindset, that are just based on Mindset, courage, just run, go, yeah. just jump off the cliff and, and you'll find a plan. If no one gives you one, you'll figure out a plan on the way down. And you do a beautiful job. And I saw that from the stage and you doing it at a larger level. Um, but it sounds like you do that on, on a level one-to-one -one, is blend those so well of I'll come alongside you. I'll run alongside you. You don't need a parachute. I'm right here with you. And... Here's the blueprint. If you follow it, we're going to end the finish line together. Yep. So, yep. And one thing about this job, I'll say this too, is it's really taught me how to communicate with other people on all different levels. Because you know how it is. You'll have some business owners that are like kind of rude. They're like kind of mean, but you kind of have to be rude back to them. You know, like, hey, you want to be a jerk? Like I can be a jerk back. But then we're like on the even playing field, you know? And then I have other people where I'm like, okay, come on, let's do it. We're going to get through this. You know, it just really depends. And so that's one thing that's been great about this job is I realized that now I'm kind of a people person. I know how to communicate with people on all different levels. Um, and I feel confident talking about Christmas. You know, someone starts asking me about stuff too personal. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> let's go back to Christmas. <laughs> Here to coach Christmas. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> people are different. So you can't coach everyone the same way in that mindset part, right? The blueprint part is probably mostly the same for every person. Like you said, people have different personalities. And on different shows I've been on today, we've talked a lot about, or maybe this week, um, different personality assessments and the DISC and how different people, and I love that you said some people are, what did you call them? I don't know. Jerks. <laughs> I was like, what harsh name am I going to use? Because I'm like, I, I'm probably one of those. And I identify <laughs> just because I'm stubborn. I am a pretty high D. I've, I've blossomed more in my eye as I've aged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I still identify. I love working with these because I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I <not> gotcha. <laughs> yep. Um, but unless you reflect that and are stern with them, they don't take the gentle coaching and they're not going to, they're not going to respect you. They're not going to respect your direction. They're going to say, you have no idea what the you're talking about. Yeah. And that's probably too the cold calling because it's like take control of the call. 
right? Oh. Take control of the call, like refocus. And so that's what I kind of dealing with the the jerk, you know, and like, of course, I'm not here to tell you like, you're not a big head honcho, but I'm just here to let you know that I have another way, another way that's proven to work. <laughs> So, but no, it's great. I love it. I love <laughs> with people as much as I want to be home alone. I'm like, it's so much fun. And to see people in person, I'm sure, as you know, we're connecting with people virtually. But once we see them, it's sometimes I'm like, I've been talking to people for years. And then I finally meet them. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is great. We're like family. <laughs> oh, I bet that's a great part of Clipicon, like that you've been working with people forever. Oh, you know, yeah just virtually via Zoom or on the phone. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah! Yeah, you're here. <laughs> it's you in real life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to take a real quick commercial break. Those of you that are in the Facebook group, uh, leave us a comment, say hi, ask a question to us. And we'll be right back after this commercial break if I successfully do it. All right, let's take a step back to Clippa and tell the viewers, explain more from a level that people that haven't ever heard of it, um, people that are listening on Turf Step Radio or people that are watching on Facebook. I hadn't heard of Clippa before. <laughs> um, and then Matt reached out to me. And I know a lot of people in the lawn and landscape industry who are listening on Turf Step Radio. And I know a lot of them personally and people that do holiday lighting. And I first, you know, talked to Matt when he asked me to come and speak and learn just a little bit about Clippa, but not until I was there and went to dinner with you guys on Wednesday night and was just learning all of the details <laughs> of the magic you guys do. And I'm like, everybody needs this. Why doesn't everybody do this? Everyone that's just starting holiday. I know so many people that have started holiday lighting and are just trying to get into it themselves and figure it out themselves. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Everybody needs this. So take us back, explain yeah. everything about this, and then we'll dive into a little more of the Christmas magic. Yeah, so back before I started, Clippa originally started as a Facebook group of installers, uh, Christmas site installers helping in other installers all over the US and Canada. Um, and it was just like, hey, the guy in California has questions about this and the guy in Florida can relate or someone in the Midwest and then someone, um, you know, somewhere, someone somewhere else can help. And so um, originally when Matt started the company, he had um, a different business partner and they had a couple of different avenues of, of Christmas stuff that they did. And um, Clippa was just created to train people. So they took their 20 years of experience um, and combined it into a few years, uh, a few days of training so that that way you're ready to kind of just just launch your business. Um, so a lot of people, if you're in um, pressure washing, window cleaning, any type of landscape or tree trimming, anything like that, oftentimes when it starts to get cold or in the fall, your business will slow down. And so Christmas is perfect for anyone in those industries because you don't have to get rid of those good employees. You don't have to start over. Um, and you can also make a lot of money in a really short period of time. Um, and so aside from that, how we've grown every year is originally it was just residential training. Um, and then we started to have, um, more resources. So, um, included with our training is a membership. And then we give you an additional like 16 hours of training videos, useful forms, downloads, contracts, ex examples, photo examples, and, um, and of course, ongoing live support. This is all included. So we don't just want you to train and be like, good luck. Like we actually want you to be successful in the industry. We, we want you to grow. And um, and then we just added on commercial training last year, which has been great. So a lot of people, as with most uh, service related business, businesses, what I've noticed is we're comfortable in residential, but commercial because we're talking about larger price tags tend to scare people. Um, when I think personally commercial is easier because it's not their money. They're like, whatever, spend it, do this. Um, so it's fun. So we just try to make it as easy as possible um, to get the resources, the products, be in front of anyone who's anyone in the industry that's really making a difference. Um, and of course, you know, making money and, and doing it the right way and, and they're successful. So we just try to share all those resources with our installers. Um, anyone too, and, and you don't always have to be a member, like to come to Clipicon, that's open to all installers, you know, um, we just have exclusive, um, resources for our members, if that makes sense. Yeah. And 
we'll talk a little bit about the ongoing training, but I first heard just that overview and I was kind of like, okay, well, the people I know have kind of figured it out themselves or figuring out themselves. Or when you say training, I thought, well, they got training from somebody that's been doing it for 10 years here. Uh, why would they need that? It's not like I was skeptical, but I was like, okay, that's an awesome thing that you offer, but it is so comprehensive <laughs> the entire thing that you guys have put together. Like when you say training, you mean the entire blueprint. <laughs> I can describe what I learned at dinner of <laughs> massive, like from start to finish every single thing. Like it is every single step of the way to do it the best. And not just learn from the person in your city that has maybe been doing it for 10 years and learn how to hang the lights and learn how to do it safety wise and learn how to do a bid and learn about the product to use and figure out where to get the products and sort of the basics. Mm -hmm. The things that everyone just thinks they can get by learning to know and then make some money. Why not? You guys have the entire <laughs> blueprint. Like I said, <laughs> uh, I was like, it's so worth it to, uh, you know, get, be involved in that and get training from start to finish because you help everyone be more profitable on every level of the game comprehensively. So know how to bid, know how to, when Matt was telling me like all the different dimensions, I mean, this many inches apart, it's this much more thousand dollars per square foot. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but each part of that, like it, pays for itself in profitability, but to be more efficient and to know everything, all aspects of it, no matter if you are just starting or thinking about getting into holiday lighting, haven't done it, or even if you've been in it for a few years, to come to the training and think, what little tweaks can I do to become more efficient, more profitable, learn from the people that are doing it the best. And like you said, you get live support forever. I feel like you guys are such a family that all of you just have this, it's not just a support system and live support, but a real family that has your back the entire season to give, to help you give your clients the absolute best service. And you're not trying to figure it out yourself in the middle of craziness, but you guys are figuring it out for them. Yep, exactly. And that's why we try to make it easy. Aside from like just us here at Clipa headquarters, we have the world's best certified trainers. We have, you know, Brett and Ryan with Lights All Year in Atlanta. We absolutely love them. And they have, they started, I mean, Brett and Ryan started probably eight years ago, nine years ago, and they are doing over a million dollars in just six weeks, you know? And then of course, JC, we all love JC. He's like the best. Um, but we have people who are actually out there installing, actually running crews, running service related businesses, sharing their experience with you in all different parts of the US, you know? And for us, we only do commercial here. So on all levels of where you're at in Christmas, we have people that can help you. And I always love it. People are like, oh, do you have any referrals or people I can talk to? And I'm like, I have a, a laundry list of people who would be willing to take your call and share their experience of what has worked for them. And it really is such a small price to pay for what you learn. It's the smartest thing you can do in, is invest in your business and have somebody tell you exactly what to do. Because um, you'll get that money back 10 times over, 100 yes. times over. <laughs> oh, that's what I thought. As yeah, it is. Like, ROI on this is insane. Yeah. <laughs> just, really from, just from the initial first year that the strategy, all of it, but that support of what to do and what to do next and where to get, because it's at every level, like I said, no matter how far in you are of product and new ideas. And I was mind blown. <laughs> yes. It's a lot. It's always changing. I mean, as with any industry, you need to stay up on industry trends. You need to keep educating yourself. And a lot of people, I, I, for me, I never think I, I always know there's more for me to learn. I have to remain coachable. I have to remain teachable um, if I want to grow, if I want to get uncomfortable, because I know for me, like I learned more from my peers and the other women that I work with here and, and Matt, of course, Matt is completely outnumbered, by the way, if there's like 10 of us women in the office and then him. So <laughs> he thinks he has a great idea and we like shut him down. We're like, absolutely not. <laughs> But we, um, I learned so much from them every day and helping them and them helping me. Um, and I think that's important in the industry too. Like, or my clients are teaching me constantly, hey, this came up. And I can't tell you how many times it's like November, you know, the week of Thanksgiving and I'm on FaceTime 
with them, they're on a roof and they're like, I'm having issues with this. Like, okay, let's face let's see what's going on, you know, and, and FaceTime is great for troubleshooting, by the way. I love it. Um, so I can connect with people wherever they're at and say, and if I don't know the answer, I can say, hey, you know what? Call JC, <laughs> call Ryan, call someone else and they'll know exactly what it what's going on and, and make sure that they get the support they need. Oh, wow. I love that. <laughs> And the best thing, troubleshoot. Oh. Um, school is never out for the pro. I love that you said that you're always learning. And people, uh, that is the sign of a true entrepreneur that wants to scale and wants to grow, that knows that I'm not the expert always, all the time. I'm not right all of the time. That how can I constantly be learning from people that have a different idea and learn how to do it better? learn how to do it more efficiently, learn new ideas, learn how to service the customers better, learn new, you know, new things. Yeah. How do you get um, inspiration for new ideas each season to share? Oh my gosh. Well, um, I would say first is the mistakes, right? The experience is the best teacher that you can ever find. So every year I learn more and more and more. Every year I think I'm more prepared. I think I really have it down now. And then something happens and then I go, oop, we don't want to do that again. But I'm able to use that experience. And, and then we too collectively, what we do as a team, we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. What yeah. works, what didn't work, what do we need to refine? Because there's some things we're like kind of good at, but we're like, we could be better at them if we set some time aside. Um, so I think that's important too, is like communication, being clear with communication, and listening to everybody on the team, what can they say? Um, and then, of course, me, when I go back and I share whatever my experience is with someone else, I'm learning more, if that makes sense. Like, I can't keep it unless I give it away. I can talk about it all day long, but, like, I really have to share it with you. Great people. lines. I'm yeah. really keep, I can't keep it unless I give it away. Somebody mark that down. Oh, I froze for a second. Are we still there? I lost you for a second. Did we lose Chelsea for a second? Here I froze you on it on an option of I can't keep you and you can't keep it unless you give it away. And now I froze you. Chelsea, come back. See if I can get you back. Oh. Okay, we're going to see if we can get Chelsea back here in just a second. Here, I told her to freeze, and then that literally happened. Of pause for a second and let me reflect on I can't keep something unless I'm willing to give it away. Oh, wait, now you're back. I'm back. I'm so sorry. They're doing something out there. They're doing, like, construction okay. in the warehouse. You don't need to be sorry because it, it was crazy timing because I said, okay, stop for a second. <laughs> okay, perfect. There and must be a dog. Look at us right now. <laughs> And then you literally froze. I said, stop for a second so we can pause on, pause and reflect on you can't keep something unless you give it away. And then I literally froze you. Like, <laughs> perfect. I love it. Frozen magic. Yes. <laughs> Christmas magic. Christmas <laughs> magic. Yep. Uh, so should we talk about, talk about the trainings that you have going on? We'll get into Christmas magic in a second. So talk about how people can get involved, what that looks like, the trainings that you have going on. Yeah. Coming. So I would say uh, um, what I would do is if you want more information, you can go to clipa.com, C-L-I-P-A.com. We have a bunch of information. We have all of our training inf information, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, you can see our uh, the bios for the company. You can schedule appointments with us too. If you're still not ready to make the leap, if you need some more courage, you can reach out to me or any of my coworkers, and we're happy to do um, a consultation. Like some people just don't know what's available to them. So I'm always happy to do um, a consultation, see where you're at in your business, where, where, what are your goals, where do you want to be, and see if this is a good fit for you too. Some people I'm straight up with them, like, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe you can't handle the increase in business or maybe you don't have the crews um, to get the job done. Um, we'll, be, we'll be straight with you and, and see if it works or not. Um, and then if you want referrals. Always worth that discovery call. So I love you that you do that. Like here's yeah. where you're at, what we can offer you. You can immediately see what the numbers are to come and the numbers that you can get in an ROI. Yep. Yeah, there's no risk. So all, all you're doing, the only only risk you have is maybe 
um, taking 30 minutes out of your day, you know, um, but sometimes it turns into longer than that, depending on who I'm talking to. Um, we have, we're actually at our home base right now in Orange County, California. We have our commercial training that actually starts tomorrow. Um, we do have some other great trainings that are going to be coming up. Um, residential trainings, we have um, Salt Lake City. We're going to be out there um, in May, May 5th and 6th. Um, in June, we're coming to Atlanta. So Atlanta is a busy week. We have our residential training, uh, June 5th and 6th. And then we have a commercial training uh, the 8th and 9th. So Atlanta is always like a really hot, hot location. We usually get a bunch of people that come. Um, of course, we're coming to Orlando. Great opportunity too. a lot of um, people that come to our trainings. They love to bring their families so family can go on vacation, spend a couple of days, of course, growing your business and then take the family on vacation. Um, this year, too, the first year we're coming to Vancouver. So we will be in Canada um, July 28th and 29th. So that will be a residential training, um, Nashville at the huge convention, which I'm sure, are you coming out to the huge convention this year? I am. Okay. Well then we'll all be there. So everyone has to come to the Nashville training because Angela will be there. I will be there. We have to do a bunch of fun stuff prior to the huge convention. Um, and then we're also going to be in Houston, um, in September. So a lot of dates to show up, a lot of places that are easy to travel to, um, so you guys really have no excuse to not show up for you and for your business. Awesome. And their first step is that if they want to, that discovery call to figure out, oh. walk you through exactly what you're going to learn. Is it a fit for your business? Um, yeah. yeah, make the right. call, make the call and then, um, ask all the questions that you can, you know, um, I would say one thing is, is. We're always thinking about it and it's never a good time. It's always inconvenient, but nothing that's convenient in my life has ever been good for me. Anything that's inconvenient that I have to work for. Yeah. Anything I have to work for is way more rewarding, whether it's in sales or even in my personal life. But if I work really hard and I show up and I do things I don't want to do, and then I'm usually like, oh, wow, I like the results of this. I feel great. You came full circle in that. In the very beginning, you talked about working hard and that work ethic. And you're right. Nothing that can be is convenient is ever good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And be, it's a different word for, you know, being comfortable. But exactly. You always think, oh, next year, it's not the right time. I have all these things going on. I have things with my kids or things that I wanted to do this summer or, uh, we realize for most home service businesses, right? If whatever it is that you're doing, this is the busy season. Yep. So there are plenty of excuses why this is the busy season. I need to be running my business and in the field instead of looking for ways to expand. So you're right. It's not convenient to step outside of your business when you think you need to be in it and in the grind. Yeah. But you figure it out and find a way, make a way. Yep. Exactly. To make it happen, um, so many people need to, or at the stage that are listening, need to understand, like, you you got to take that leap, to take that leap of faith to get outside of, I have to be here, I have to do, I have to, I have to, I have to take care of what is here and present, instead of, I need to invest in growth. Yeah, and I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You fail? And like, we're not going to tell someone, oh, you need to buy $50,000 worth of product. You know, that's not realistic. We don't know what you service, what your crews look like. But like, what's what's the worst that could happen is like you get out to give someone a bid and they say no. Okay, then I move on to the next one. But like, we all have to fail. I have to fail in order to realize like what I need to do to be successful. You know, I can't just wake up and be like, everything's great. I'm perfect. The business is perfect. Like, I have to really look at those things and say, hey. I messed up here, but where, what did I learn from this and where can I go? You know, ask for help. Exactly. Okay. On that note, before we take the next spin, we're going to take our final commercial break. I love those of you that are commenting. We're going to figure out how to get your comments up here. Shine is in a second. Um, so Facebook, again, if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to ask some questions. It's your last chance to do that. And here's our final commercial break. Okay. Okay. We haven't we haven't got the comments on here yet because it's not working when I do it. 
Yeah. Stacey has a question. Who's your favorite Clifford trainer? I saw that. Oh, this is a really hard one, JC. JC, I love you so much, but my favorite is Brett. And the reason why is because Brett and I traveled last year. We did a training in York, Pennsylvania, and then we did a road trip from Pennsylvania through New Jersey. And on this road trip, we flew into Baltimore. We drove from Baltimore to Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, then from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. And we had like an eating tour the entire time like we were there. So we like had seafood in Baltimore. And then we went to York and went to Amish country and went on a buggy. We stopped in Philly and had a Philly cheesesteak, you know, then we went to New Jersey and like, so it was like, we had so much fun. And I was hoping, cause we, me and Brett haven't like just traveled just him and I together and I was like, well, I hope he like wants to eat, you know, <laughs> that's my, my whole go goal on these work trips. And, um, and he eats just like me. So it was great, but I love you, JC. Maybe we'll go on a road trip and my, my heart will change, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. I love that. What's your favorite food <laughs> off of that? What was your favorite? Oh my gosh. What's In general or just on that trip? In general and on that trip. Cause I love food. I know. I, I love I, food so much. Um, that's so hard. I love, okay, so we're in California and, and Southern California and we have the world's best Mexican food. So Mexican mm -hmm. food is always my go-to, but I also love Chinese food. I love dim sum. Um, I love it all, but I love barbecue. It's so hard to choose, but I could eat Mexican food for the rest of my life. <laughs> Pick one. Yes. That's yeah. me. If somebody's like your favorite and I'm like, this sounds like I can't make a decision. I just love food <laughs> yes what was your favorite food on that trip okay that was a hard one so when we okay i'll talk about my experience first i wanted to get i kept asking people like what do you have to get when you're in new jersey and everyone's like oh pork roll egg and cheese and i'm like what is that and like ask for salt pepper ketchup like go to the deli and get one so i kept practicing in the mirror because i'm like pork roll, egg and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Cause I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm from California, you know, and Brett was dying. So I got one and um, it was just basically like a greasy little sandwich, breakfast sandwich with salt, you know, ham and cheese and, and an English muffin. But that wasn't my favorite. Um, we had some great seafood while we were out there. So seafood is always great. And we were like able to go on a boat um, in the water, which is great in like um, Asbury Park in Belmar, out in that area in New Jersey. So it was, it was great. I thought I was going to the shore. I didn't realize it was like a nice place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love traveling and food experiences. Maybe yeah. I can do one with you instead. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. We're planning it. <laughs> yes. I'm reading all the comments and yeah, Shine and I are both, we're having technical difficulties in getting the comments back over there. So it's only me getting to be entertained by everyone harassing each other on on the comments and you can't see that. the people on Facebook can see them below so that's yeah. good we can read them later so now I'm like what was I even going to ask you because I'm laughing at everyone going down this rabbit hole of food with us <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now I'm obsessed Chelsea and I are just going to go on a food excursion and leave this show <laughs> yep <laughs> just have to pick which part of the U.S. we're going to do it in you can go to a okay. tropical and fun where it's warm. Oh, that's a good idea. And what kind of food are we going to eat there? Oh, eat, pray, love. Whoever said eat, pray, love. That's a great idea. Oh, Christy did. <laughs> oh, who, Christy, you want to go on an eat, pray, love experience with us? <laughs> she, I know her. We So me and her, when we come to the office, we always want to eat lunch at 1030. And like, even Matt will be like, what time is it? Like, it's so early. I'm like, it's lunchtime. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. I'm like, yeah, this is when we eat lunch. <laughs> okay, she's in. All right, Perfect. it's a clip of Queens, Christmas Queens. Oh, that was a question. What, what do you feel about a title? It has been clip of girls. <laughs> well, like I mean, somebody suggested Christmas Queens. I think Christmas Queens sounds great. I mean, Matt always calls us the clip of girls, but I'm like, we're getting up there in age. We're not all like super young anymore. So I think Christmas Queens sounds a lot better. <laughs> I am totally claiming it for you. I said that. I was like, I love it. Girls isn't, but I love Queen. So I'm going to second that, the Perfect. vote for second, third, fourth, it, the Christmas Queens. 
<laughs> I love it. Now we're claiming it with you, Christy, and whatever, whoever else in the Christmas Queens wants to go on the Eat, Pray, Love trip. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Courtney will and Alice and Brooke. The rest, everyone would like, would like to come. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the, one of the best things about this episode. <laughs> we're planning an Eat, Pray, Love trip maybe after Christmas. Yes, perfect. <laughs> so, this is totally off what I was going to talk to you about, but you guys have shared this before and I love this because uh, Collaborate Live today was on culture and you guys do a great culture thing within your, with Clippa about lunch. Yes. We have, tell me about that. Yeah, we have like a little, um, I guess it's what we do is we just take shifts. So um, we cook here at the office. If it's up to us, of course, we'll eat out every day and we're all like, hey, we need to eat healthy. What do we do? And now that we have such a full team, uh, what we do is we sit down at the end of the week and we're like, okay, here's the lunch schedule for next week. Like who wants Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? And then we'll each pick something to make um, on that day. And we usually all help each other when we make it, but we've been like making some pretty awesome stuff. Um, Christy, I, like I said, I always follow like the recipe. Christy's really good at just like whipping stuff together. Um, and then, um, Matt's wife actually, Brooke, she always makes like really awesome stuff. Sometimes she even makes us breakfast too. So we'll have breakfast and lunch. Um, so it's great. Everybody is getting better at cooking. We're all domesticated now, I should say. Um, <laughs> and we get to eat some awesome food and it brings everyone together. It's nice to like sit down, even if it is for 10, 20 minutes and just pause what we're doing and reconnect over food. So yeah. it's great. There's something about sharing a meal together like you said, reconnecting over food. And so many times businesses, teams do it sporadically, even though they do it very intentionally, they might have a meal together once a month, right? And you guys doing it every day, how powerful that is, that connection and reconnecting over food. And when you are so connected as a team in that space, how much more powerfully you can be united to connect with the clients you serve. And I think that so comes across. I really just like got goosebumps. You. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you shared that, I don't know who shared it with me first. I think you guys did a great event that's shifting to that too. At Copacon, you guys hosted a ladies lunch, which was a great event that I'll go into. We're going to run out of time, but uh, somebody told me about that there and I was like, that is, that is one of the reasons you guys have been able to come together so powerfully as a team and serve everyone because you are so united with each other and your clients can feel that the family feeling that you create intentionally every single day comes across to every single person that you serve. Yeah, thank you. And and the ladies' lunch is great. We actually, when we attended IWCA, they invited us to a women's luncheon. And what was great is we got to sit and talk to people we would never, we would have never talked to. And maybe they weren't in Christmas, or maybe, maybe it was somebody who um, was in the background. And it just taking that time to pause from our busy schedule at the trade show and reconnect. I was like, this is great. We have to do this at Clippicon. And it was the best part. I was, when we came back and we were like hashing everything out, I'm like, I don't care. The women's luncheon was my favorite. Everything else was fun, but it was so nice because we would forget to eat too. We're running around, yeah. we're speaking, we're doing this. So to be able to say like, no, this is where you need to be for the next 45 minutes. I was like, this is great. It made the day go by great. Uh, it was such an incredible event. And I had a great table of people who really changed my, I sat with Courtney and I hadn't gotten to know her and we had such a great conversation. And, and then other, and then I also met a brand new friend that I had never met Courtney from North Carolina and oh, yeah. she ended up coming to hear me speak. And now we're great friends and we are, have plans to be in each other's lives forever. And like you said, it never would have. Yeah, it was, I can't say it was my favorite part. It was <laughs> one of my, <laughs> well, good. Uh, I'm not saying it wasn't my favorite part. It was good, but there were, there were lots of great parts of Clippicon. <laughs> yes. Um, and <laughs> what? It was fun. It was a lot it was of fun. fun. Yeah. It was so, it was so much fun. There were so many great parts of Clippicon, so I can't say just one was the best, but um, <laughs> that was so unique bringing <laughs> favorite 
favorite parts. <laughs> uh, on StreamYard, I, I have no idea who is saying this stuff. That's it's the crazy. only thing. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um but it was special to bring women you know just the women together to connect in a different way because definitely in the home services space mm -hmm. it's a different element and it's a minority and people have different roles and so yeah it was a very special thing that you guys created and a unique opportunity for people to connect so that was great. Now I'm completely off track of laughing at <laughs> I don't know. And everyone giving us a hard time. Jeremy Brooke is over here giving us a hard time. Yeah, I was like, goodness gracious, the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost it. Okay, so we didn't talk about the magic of Christmas. What do you love about working in Christmas is magic right? Christmas time is magic and spreading love and joy into people's lives. What do you love most about getting to do that all year round? I would say this time of the year is the best time of the year because it's a lot of business development, outreach, quotes. Um, what I've noticed is it's so crazy in such a, a small amount of time. And I consider myself a low risk person. Like I live a minimal risk life. I don't like anything too crazy. Like I'm in the same spots every day doing the same things, very routine based. And for Christmas, it's kind of like gives me that rush of excitement because it's so crazy. And I'll have all these quotes out and then people are approving all this stuff. And then you get down, you're at the tree lighting ceremony. Everyone's being crazy. The client is like thousands of people are showing up. And then what happens is the tree turns on and you hear everyone go, <gasps> and Santa throws glitter or whatever it might be. And everyone's laughing. And for that moment, for that 10 seconds, everyone is happy. It's so weird. It's like time stops. Everyone is happy. And it's just like relief. And I think that's just like the greatest gift that this job could give me is that for that, that 10 seconds of that moment of all of these people here together, we don't know each other. Everyone is happy and having a good time. You get to spread magic and joy and love all year long. Yeah. And of course, the money. We love to make money. <laughs> we wouldn't do it if we didn't make money. Right. And you love to help other people make money. Yes. That's rewarding, too. It feels really good. That's when, you know, and then when you watch people grow, like, okay, it's been three seasons or three years later and you see them. And I'm like, oh, I remember when you just started. <laughs> it's like they're your babies. When yes. you're helping people and they just start, you're like, ah, look at you yeah. now. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. A couple final questions. Uncomfortable. What is the next thing that you need to do to get uncomfortable and grow? Oh my gosh. Of course, delegate. Stop saying yes to everything. In my personal life too. That's not just like my work life. That's in life in general. Stop saying yes to everything and delegate. I love talking about that. Working in your own unique genius doing what you do best, what you love to do, and getting rid of the rest by delegating. Yep. What are you going to next delegate personally or professionally? Oh my God. Fire seat the last five minutes. Gosh, this is terrible. Okay, personally, I do a lot of stuff like part of my like healing journey and recovering process. I do a lot of volunteering and giving back and um, – you know, I have to learn how to say no to that too. Not, I can't do it every night of, I can't be a good wife. I can't be a good employee and I can't be this great person in the community all the time. I have to evenly space out my time and I don't know how to do that. I'm like all in, I'm like crazy with everything that I do. But when I do that, something is always lacking. So I think the first would be. Um, and that's hard. Like you said, when you're an all in person and you don't know how to be all in in every area. Yeah. And they're all good things. That's why it's hard to be picky. Like, what do I, what do I say no to? And realistically, my job, like, doesn't interfere with my personal life this time of the year. It's only in wintertime when we have to work a little bit more. But yeah, so that's some self-reflecting, maybe some meditation and some, some, um, you know, deep analysis. I'll have to look at that and make some uncomfortable that's your, decisions. That's your, that's your homework. What are you going to delegate in each of the areas. How are you going to get uncomfortable in that? 
Do you have any parting words for the audience of advice, challenge to get uncomfortable? Any of those? Mm -hmm. I would say um, work past your limiting beliefs. Um, one side of your head is feeding you BS and the other side is buying into it. So the best thing we could do is take some direction from someone else, an outside perspective, and um, take that leap, um, that leap of courage to do something different and, um, and be okay with failing or making a mistake. You've had the most nuggets of any. <laughs> <laughs> so when we go back and transcribe this, the number of quotes that are going to come from it. And that right. is a reason, not that we are trying to give people a reason to get a coach or to do Clippa um, to do the program, but there, that is, that is the reason to get somebody outside of yourself, to join a program, to get a mentor, to get a coach, because you cannot you can only stretch yourself so much because you are spinning those two sides of your head. Like you yeah. just said, if you really want to take yourself to the next level, you have to have someone, a group, a community, being part of Clippa, getting a coach, getting a mentor. You have to have something to take you to the next level. Yep. A thousand. Okay, percent. Random, random question. Okay. And I just realized I'm going to get a wheel. I don't have one. I'm going to get a wheel. And be okay. Like, <laughs> but now we did the eat, pray, love thing. So yeah. if we're going to travel anywhere in the world and eat anything, where and what would it be? Oh my gosh. <gasps> I don't want to decide. Can more than one because it's an eat, pray, love tour, evidently. <laughs> this is so hard. Oh my. Well, we have to hit. Okay. I have, I'm going to Hawaii next week. So Hawaii <gasps> might be there. I've never been to Hawaii. My going to Hawaii next week. I'm going to Oahu. I've never been. Me and my husband have never been. So I'm like, we have to go. So we're going next week. And so who knows? Hawaii could be somewhere that we go. I don't know yet. But I'm just going to say yes, because it's warm. It's okay. exciting. Um, oh, my gosh. This is so hard. I don't know. I don't want to choose. <laughs> I don't want to choose. You don't want to choose what we're eating in Hawaii? No. Anything. I love seafood. So anything seafood, crab legs, lobster. I want all that stuff <laughs> on the beach. Handle it. Christy, you're, if you're still on, you have something you want to chime in on the tour. Do you have a place and a food for the tour? Yeah. Christy. <laughs> She's place she and food. <laughs> <laughs> Christy um, and have been for years we've worked to hear about the same amount of time and we've always like our relationship consists over like what we're eating <laughs> i love it i love it and i love the community of support that you gathered i didn't read a lot of the comments so hopefully everyone else did and we didn't get them on the thing but um you have a lot of love because you've built an amazing <laughs> community around you that loves you. So thank you so much for being here with me, Chelsea. I look forward to getting to know you more. And I just, I am, like I said, in awe. I was in awe at dinner of the incredible program that you guys have created and the family of support around people. And if you are doing holiday lights and you are not a part of this, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I have nothing to do with this industry, but as a business owner, this is just such an incredible, or a good Benja box. Benja box. Oh, Benja box. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Italian too. Yeah. So she would say, let's go to Italy. Oh, and we're going to do all of it because it's a food tour, right? <laughs> yeah. So yes. Italian. Can we go to Italy? And then are we getting a Benja box is maybe an Asian thing? Yeah. We should just do that Mediterranean cruise. That's like 45 days. And we'll be in the Amalfi Coast. Right. We'll Matt, guess what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll be running Christmas from the road <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> next year. But in all seriousness, um, thank you. That would be perfect. Would be perfect. <laughs> We're going to plan it. We, we just manifested it right here. Yep. So but thank you so much. Like I said, I am, I was just in awe of everything that you guys have, have created and what an incredible support system and family you have for people. So everyone that's listening, if you have any interest in holiday lights, if you've been doing it for a while, make sure that you check it out. So 
Thank you for joining us live. We're here every Wednesday live, 4.30 on Turf Up Radio and on Facebook. What is one thing that you need to do this week to get uncomfortable? See you next week.